we found out about his heart defect um, at our 20 week scan. Um, we'd been, um, just like with our previous child, we went on the day to have our scan, we went into the room. Um, took quite a long time for her to scan us and I remember, I mean looking back on it now, I think she potentially saw there was a problem quite early on into the scan. Um, she said that the baby was in a funny position so kind of sent us away um, to have a drink in the canteen and to come back and I remember coming back into the room and there was somebody else with her, um, another sonographer, which for me kind of sounded some alarm bells. I think for you, you maybe didn't Pass notice and passed your eye. <laughs> um, so I was kind of a little bit anxious at that point and a little bit more worried. We found out about Isabella's heart defect at the 20 week scan, just a routine um, 20 week scan at the local hospital. Um, and the sonographer was just basically trying to find some photographs, like get obviously the photographs needed for um, of the heart. Um, and they, they just weren't picking up the, the pictures that they needed to pick up. Um, and then they, were, they sort of gave us a bit of an inkling that, that something wasn't quite right and they referred us then to Leeds, which was a week later, like the longest week of his life. Um, and then she stopped scanning and she said to us that she'd seen something um, or she thinks she'd potentially seen a problem with the baby's heart. Um, she'd looked at an area of the heart that I don't think they necessarily expected to. Yeah. Um, I mean, she was a senior sonographer, so she was very thorough. Um, and she said that she'd seen that one of the outflow, was it the outflow track? I think she was looking at the aorta. Yeah, she was looking at the aorta was um, marginally narrower um, than it should be. I think she explained that the two tracks should be the same size and the aorta looked marginally narrower. And that could represent a, um, a condition called coarctation of the aorta. We walked into this room in Leeds and there were about five or six doctors that, that, was, that were there to scan. Um, and I can remember looking at the faces when they were scanning and, and convinced that I were gonna walk out of out of the room and, and they were gonna say that everything was fine. And obviously it wasn't. It really took us into a separate room afterwards and, and I, 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 even then I was still convinced. And I remember the doctor sat down with us and he said um, the concerns that they had at, at your local hospital about a heart, you know, they, they are correct and she does have hyperplastic right heart syndrome. Um, and I remember asking her a few more questions and said, oh, you know, well, what does that mean? What might happen? Um, and she said, you know, there was a couple of procedures they could do. Sometimes they can um, balloon it um, or it might need surgery. But she, she did reassure us that Algi would then have a, you know, give the baby a, a thorough scan and then tell us what, what the condition was and, and how we could move forward. She was saying, I'm just a little bit worried. It wasn't a, it wasn't alarming. There wasn't, there's definitely something wrong. It was just, I just want, I just, she was, she was talked about it being, she was, I think she, I remember her saying, I'm, I'm, I think I'm being a bit of a wimp. I just want to doubly make sure that, that everything's fine. So just refer you on just to make sure it's, it's okay, rather than saying there's something wrong. We react when, you know, when we heard the, the news, we react in different ways. And I think we've always reacted in different ways to hearing anything about Evan's heart. I take the point of view that I'm sure it'll be fine and if anything bad comes along I'll deal with it and you're quite the opposite and you assume the worst and you kind of worried a lot about it and you went on Google and and, uh, and researched as much as possible for, for hours on end. The doctor that gave us the news, he, he, like I say, he sat in a room with us um, and he, he actually drew us a picture, which I've still got, he drew us a picture of what a normal heart would look like and then he flipped over the paper and he said this is what your baby's heart looks like and he explained that like the right ventricle was missing and the, um, that just basically, you could clearly see through his diagrams how, how different it was to a, a normal heart and then he drew on, on, the, on Isabella's heart um, what procedures would be needed to be done to sort of prolong her life and get her to where she needed to be. At the time now where because of the internet it's like Dr Google which is the worst thing you can do um, you know because as one thing we've come to learn with children with with heart defects is that every child's different you know two children can have the same condition and one can have a really positive outcome and one child can struggle a little bit more and yet on paper they've got the same condition and I think trying not to do that is it would be my advice, but it's very hard. You know, I think you sit in the second we got in the car, I was kind of Googling co-optation of the aorta <laughs> and it's just, you know, and then you scare yourself because you read horrific things. And actually, you know, children have such different outcomes. We tend to social media um, 
and we found families. I think what I was trying to do is find a family with a child with the same or similar heart condition that was a lot older. Um, one little girl um, that I found on, on a social media website that she'd had a, one of the uh, procedures that I knew Isabella was going to need. Um, and I can just remember seeing this picture of her in intensive care and all the wires that were coming out of her. And, and even then, because I hadn't had Isabella at this point and I was still in denial. I think a lot that, that was a lot of like a big thing to deal with, with denial. Um, and even then I was still convinced that I wouldn't ever see my daughter and my baby in, in that condition. Looking back for me, when we'd then gone to the hospital and had the, the proper heart scan, um, I think what I found helpful is a bit of a silly thing really, but I remember we got then some like, some literatures were on it, so we had, there was sort of two things to consider. There was the, the scan then brought up aortic stenosis as well, which was something that the original sonographer hadn't particularly spotted. The way we were told, I, I think as a whole, it was, I don't really think there could have been any, any better way to be told. I don't really think there's any nice way to be told, but the, the way they, hen, they handled it and the fact that they had different people in there to support us, like the cardiac liaison nurse was there to support us and they give us information and, and numbers that if we had questions, we could contact them and, and, and they were really, really helpful. Any form of literature that parents can be given is useful, um, especially maybe people's experiences of it. People do like to have some hope um, and, and to see some something that can make you feel quite positive about the situation, um, especially if you've got older children. I mean, we were lucky that Sam was still, our eldest was still quite young. He, d he wasn't really affected with it, but I think if you've got older children, maybe something that you can even share with them, because breaking that news to them, I think, can imagine would be quite difficult. I remember that when we went for the 20th scan at the, the hospital before I went to Leeds, and they just mentioned that they had concerns about her heart, and I, I just thought I was gonna lose her. Because you do, don't you, you associate it, because like, it's quite a big organ, and you just think, well, you know. And I never heard of congenital heart defect up until that point. Yeah, I didn't obviously realise everything that they can do for, for babies with heart defects. I think the main thing that helped, and that still helps, is, is sort of talking to other families. Um, families of children that have got similar heart conditions and seeing how well they're, how well they're doing. And I think just as a whole, speaking to other families is really helpful because they can sort of understand all your worries and fears and, and everything that goes with it. And it's also nice because obviously before Isabella was born, we didn't know about congenital heart defects and it's such a big, we're like a big family now. So lots of us. <laughs>